I don't agree with the Bush doctrine. And I don't know what that is. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilarious Tina Fey SNL moments. It's whatever the kids say. For this list, we're looking at the comedian's most side-splitting appearances in Studio 8H. That means that iconic sketches that she wrote but did not appear in will not be on this list. Before the video, drop us a comment and let us know what your favorite Tina Fey project is. Number 10. Monologue. Tina Fey embarrasses the new cast members. I don't have a show anymore. <laughs> and uh, unless I'm on TV once every three weeks, a little part of me dies. When Tina Fey returned to SNL to play host, she made sure to share the spotlight with the show's newest cast members. The sketch comedy veteran welcomed the six bright-eyed stars in the making, including Noelle Wells, Beck Bennett, and Kyle Mooney. She informs them that as a rite of passage, one of the things they have to do is embarrass themselves. As new cast members, one of your most important tasks is doing very embarrassing dancing behind the host in the monologue. Okay, everyone does it. Here's me dancing next to Andy Roddick. Faye then leads them through a jazzy song and dance, complete with sparkly jackets and spandex short shorts. While most workplaces require newbies to go through lots of paperwork, Saturday Night Live's orientation is a little more fun. Look at you. I hope your father isn't watching. Oh, he is. Then let me see some crotching. Number nine, Weekend Update. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler mentor Lindsay Lohan. At the height of her Mean Girls fame, Lindsay Lohan paid a visit to SNL to host and promote the teen comedy. During one of her scenes, she played herself in a Weekend Update segment alongside anchors Tina and Amy Poehler. You are a very good singer. That is true. You have a lovely voice, but you are such a good actress. I don't want to hear that you're neglecting your acting. <laughs> in the sketch, the two comedians offer her some guidance and advice. They highlight some of the swirling rumors about Lohan during the time. I'm going to ask you one more time. Are those things real? Oh my god, yes! <laughs> because when people ask me if they're real, I always tell them yes. And I would hate for you to be making a liar out of me, Lindsay. Lindsay turns the tables on the two by calling them out for their own shortcomings. Tina, you admitted to me that you used to have sex with a guy because you thought he would help get you into movies. Yes, but that was before Fandango made everything so easy. <laughs> Okay, I mean, and Amy, you're drunk right now. However, their advice doesn't quite stick, but it is appreciated nonetheless. Number 8. The Bush Twins' Secret Language Whenever Faye and Poehler are on screen together, they produce comedy gold. And this sketch is proof of that. Oh, God, Barbara, I got the spins. <laughs> Jenna, I told you not to drink straight tequila. I didn't. I mixed it with Captain Morgan. Playing the Bush twins, Barbara and Jenna, the two put on southern accents after a drunken night out. Using their own coded twin secret language, they debate over their father George W. Bush's competency as president. Do be you but think but dance but good but president. <laughs> but yes, I but think but he's but really but good. The tongue twister of the sketch relies on their joint commitment to the silly and fun premise, and they pull it off flawlessly. You heard the dad's be speech. <laughs> We're be spreading be freedom. Saddam be Hussein was a be bad, bad be man. <laughs> I be no, but but the be war in Barack is a big be ship at be storm. With a surprise cameo at the end by Daryl Hammond as Dick Cheney, it's one of the duo's best moments in the series. By the way, I be heard by everything but you but what we're saying. Number 7. Meet Your Second Wife In this 2015 sketch, Tina appears as herself, playing co-host of a new game show with a satirical twist. They may not know it yet, but they're all guests on America's favorite new show, The name of the game is Meet Your Second Wife, and takes unsuspecting male contestants and introduces them to their future spouses. Making a statement about the behavior of older men pursuing much younger women, everything about it is quick-witted and super sharp. Okay, well, I guess I'll see you again in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's seven. Playing off the rule of three, the sketch keeps escalating, getting more and more absurd. Thanks to Faye's direct delivery and superb writing, it is a masterclass in sketch comedy. Well, that's not that bad. I mean, the other ones were younger, right? 
Slow down. See, Alicia has a serious boyfriend, and she just found out she's three months pregnant with, you guessed it, your second wife. <laughs> Let's show Toby the sign of that. Number six, Revolutionary War. The year is 2018, the month is February, and the Super Bowl has the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots ready to go head to head. In a surprise cameo, Pennsylvania native Faye makes an appearance in a sketch that derides the rivalry between the teams. Set in 1775, the premise pits New England and Pennsylvania revolutionaries against one another to prove who is better. Faye comes out slinging the Keystone State lingo, which the audience eats up, and even gets to Pete Davidson, who has to conceal his laughter behind a prop. So grease up them poles, cause Philly's gonna win, and then one of these guys is gonna punch a police horse. Yeah, we's a bunch of rowdy Quakers. Sir, you're from Philadelphia? Also featuring alum Rachel Dratch, the sketch is a short and sweet reunion for SNL audiences. Number 5. Girls Meet Blurda In the 2010s, one of the most talked about series was HBO's Girls. Today, an old man on the subway told me to shut up. All new problems. I mean, all meth and G. I don't think I talk too much. I mean, you guys would tell me if I talk too much. I mean, I don't think I do, right? As popular as it was, the comedy would come under scrutiny for its characters' often self-centered behaviors. Playing off that criticism, Tina appeared in a sketch where she played the series' newest character, Blurda, an immigrant from Albania. I have roof overhead. For this, I thank God. Unable to relate to the girls' first world problems, Blurda uses her hardships to call the millennials out on their behavior. One of the things that makes the sketch so strong is its specificity, which Faye nails as always. Don't speak. If you speak, they will know you are simple. If they know you are simple, they will drown you in river. I am very hungry. Please, may I eat donut from your head? Number four, Bronx Beat with Tina Fey. If you tuned in to Saturday Night Live during the 2000s, chances are you encountered the ladies of Bronx Beat. Enough! Take a day off! Enough. Go take a nap! Go for a walk! Yeah. Do something nice! Yeah. Go see a movie! Yeah, go see, go see Star Wars! Oh my god, enough, no, enough with enough. Star Wars! When Tina returned for co-hosting, she joined the fast-talking, opinionated housewives played by Amy Poehler and Maya Rudolph, Betty Caruso and Jody Dietz on their talk show, sporting a teased wig and green eyeshadow. Faye appeared as Cousin Karen, a Philly resident with a distinct accent. Yeah, okay, you know, I just got done clearing deadfall out of my yard, and I made a gang of stuffed peppers to take down the shore. My son Dave just started ROTC. How are you? A born and bred Pennsylvanian performer, Faye perfectly pulls off the hard-to-master dialect and delivers another great performance. Well, you know, my brother Dave and his friend Dave and their other friend Dave saw a guy beat a Salvation Army Santa with an old car battery in the Wawa parking lot. <laughs> now, Philly's a war zone. Number 3. Mom Jeans Nearly 20 years since it originally aired, this sketch is still earning lots of laughs. Are you looking for the perfect gift for mom this Mother's Day? Introducing Mom Jeans, exclusively at JCPenney. Mom Jeans, Mom Jeans. Mom Jeans fit mom just the way she likes it. The commercial features Tina alongside Amy Poehler, Rachel Dratch, and Maya Rudolph modeling the most unflattering and ill-fitting pair of jeans referred to as Mom Jeans. Give her something that says, I'm not a woman anymore. I'm a mom. The sketch proved to be so legendary that when Faye and Dratch joined Queer Eyes Tan France on his web series Dressing Funny, they made sure to pay homage to it. Will you pop around? Let's all wear some mom jeans. Let's do it. Whether it's the catchy jingle or the costumes, this sketch is one of Faye's most acclaimed moments to date. Number 2. Weekend Update – Women's News And finally, the most important women's news item there is. We have our first serious female presidential candidate in Hillary Clinton. Tina's biggest impact on Saturday Night Live was arguably as the first female head writer. 
But her time behind the weekend update desk as half of the first all-female anchor team was also highly memorable. And there's one update bit of hers that people are still quoting to this day. As part of the ongoing Women's News segment, Tina delivers a fierce editorial on Hillary Clinton and why people should consider supporting her run for president, even if they think she's a bitch. Maybe what bothers me the most is that people say that Hillary is a bitch. And let me say something about that. Yeah, she is. Yeah. And so am I. And so is this one. Yeah, yeah. deal with it. Self-identifying as one as well. Tina explains that perhaps that's exactly the kind of person you'd want running your country. While her opinion piece did not help Clinton win the Democratic primary against Barack Obama, it did leave all us bitches with a life-affirming message to live by. Bitch is the new black! Tina Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Chicago Improv. Tina said yes and to this sketch parodying the Windy City's comedy scene. All we need is a suggestion of a household object, anything you have around your house. Dildo! Okay, uh, so something other than dildo, please. Two dildo! Brownie Husband. Tina stars in this biting ad for a human-sized and shaped brownie. Introducing Brownie Husband, our very first companion dessert. In just 90 seconds, Brownie Husband bakes into a delicious partner just for you. Mean Girls. Tina tries to star in her Broadway adaptation of Mean Girls in this fetch skit. Guys, I am so excited for all of us, and my friends Adie and Cecily are here today to support me because this was basically their idea. Oh, oh no. no. I, I was told it was a baby shower. Masters Golf Tournament. Faye scores a hole-in-one with this golf-themed sketch mocking Tiger Woods. And our new Tiger expert, Ashlyn St. Cloud. <laughs> hey, I'm Ashlyn St. Cloud, and if you get me in the bedroom, I like to get loud. <laughs> And Ashlyn, can I just remind you to watch your volume? Oh, right, so your wife doesn't hear us. No. Weekend update. Tina Fey on Playboy. Tina stops by to talk about the news that Playboy will no longer feature nudity. But you know what really killed Playboy, Colin? The internet. The internet cut out the middleman. We don't need an old man anymore to choose which one of us gets to sell pictures of our boobs. We can all sell our boobs now! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sarah Palin and Hillary Address the Nation Good evening, my fellow Americans. <laughs> I was so excited when I was told Senator Clinton and I would be addressing you tonight. Tina Fey's impression of Sarah Palin will go down as one of the best and most beloved imitations in SNL history. During the 2008 election, audiences returned week after week to see how Fey and the show would handle these current affairs. Whether Palin was being interviewed by Katie Couric or going up against her rival Joe Biden in a debate. Gosh darn it, we're gonna take that maverick energy right to Washington and we're gonna use it to fix this financial crisis and everything else that's plaguing this great country of ours. But the funniest sketch was probably when Faye debuted her Palin impression alongside Amy Poehler's Hillary Clinton as the pair addressed America during a fake press conference. In the sketch, Tina delivers one of the most famous and quotable lines ever born out of the legendary comedy series. I believe that diplomacy should be the cornerstone of any foreign policy. And I can see Russia from my house. I can see Russia from my house was received to rousing applause and laughter, and became a part of the cultural zeitgeist at the time proving that Tina Fey is one of the best comedic performers of her generation. So please, stop photoshopping my head on sexy bikini pictures! <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.